Last week I asked my subscribers to send through videos of their plant collections inspired by my tutorials and in today's video I'm going to look at those videos and I'm going to react to them. Hey everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is already part 3 of my Inspired by SPG series and I also put a playlist together which I'll link at the end screen if you'd like to watch part 1 and 2. First of all, thank you so much for all of the submissions. I didn't expect that many submissions, specifically given that I've already done a couple of these videos, but quite clearly a lot of you were really keen to send through some videos. So first of all, thank you so much. I think my biggest fear, my biggest fear is that I ask for things like submissions or questions and uh, I just hear crickets. And of course, thank you so much for watching my tutorials in the first place. Um, it's honestly the most rewarding knowing that there's people out there that either have started the hobby or are enjoying the hobby more or are more successful with their hobby because of my videos. It kind of makes it all feel worthwhile. So thank you so much. These are some of my favorite videos to put together. So what I've done is I've downloaded all of the videos or photos that you sent me and I just copy and pasted all of your emails into one big document. So I'm gonna read them now. Um, I didn't wanna take away the surprise for myself. So I haven't seen um, these videos or photos before. So yeah, I'm really excited to see what you guys are growing. Alrighty, let's get right into it. We're starting off with Tom. Hey Jan, my name is Tom, timeless underscore morphs on Instagram and my son's name is Otto. We are from St. Louis, Missouri. I just wanted to send my collection your way and my story of how it started. I will include a few sensitive photos of my son, but you have our permission to share on your channel and I'm including two videos. One is no talk and the other is my attempt at pronouncing plant ideas. <laughs> Don't worry, I also have no idea how to pronounce all of these. You just need to say it with confidence. And um, all right, hang on, this is a lengthy email. Let me quickly read through this. All right, that was a very lengthy but very um, very emotional email uh, and I do have Tom's permission to share but basically to sum it up his son Otto had some health issues and uh, had to spend a lot of time in hospital and to quote Tom he came out as a survivor and beat the shit out of brain cancer so good on you Otto he still enjoys the plants as much as I do and we've continued to collect as you can see in the videos and he also mentioned that the plants and being in the plant room had a very calming effect on his son while he was going through these tough times. And that it was also very calming for the parents themselves. Uh, and he did ask me to share <clears throat> the fact that it was hard for them financially. Um, and what kept them alive was childhood cancer foundations that supported them financially. So don't ever underestimate the importance of donating. There are real people at the end of these donations and it makes all the difference in the world to them. So good on you. Thanks for your lengthy email and sharing um, your story uh, with me as well. Plants can have a massive impact uh, on us. It's not just aesthetics. It's not just looking nice, but it's great to hear that you know, the hobby in itself and being surrounded by plants is making uh, a difference. Alrighty, let's have a look. All right, here he is. That must be little Otto. Uh, nice. Lots and lots of moss poles I can see. And you said there's also a video. So let's have a look at the video. I want the one with names. <laughs> I want you to, I want to hear you say them. Epipremnum implicitum. I like this Fair one. Nervium, open pollen. Looks good. Syngonium red spot tricolor. Nice. A. What are you crystallinum? Oh, dark block F2 with silver blush. Oh. Variegated philodendron black cardinal. Nice. Okay, I've never seen that before. Bunch of different papillary laminum, however you say it. <laughs> No idea. <laughs> no idea how to pronounce that either. Bridge. Some other philodendron. This is a Vitari folium. 
or the ghost. It's a nice looking it's ghost. Rolling elbow. Tank constellation. Or quinum. This is a Musa Nono Pink Banana. Oh. Um, Choco Red. Majestic. Yeah, Majestic is very nice. I love that sheen on Majestic. Varicosum Beauty. Varicosum number five. Majestic, both cuttings. Strawberry Shake. Varicosum number five. I often get asked what type my, my Varicosums are over there. We, we only have philodendron vercoisum or not philodendron vercoisum. We only have one kind in Australia, to, to my knowledge, unless somebody is uh, starting to import other forms. I know that there's a few types or varieties of the, I don't know, out there, but I find it so overwhelming <laughs> because I love vercoisum so much. If they were all available over here, I would have to buy all of them. But I think your, what you called number five, looks very similar to the one I've got, right? Variegated philodendron red anderson. That, that's a very nice one actually. That's very nice. Uh, elbow citrus plum onion. And then musica. You're doing really well with your varicosums and your majestics. And I love how you've got all of the um poles. Um, you can see it better in this photo. I love that you've got all of the poles up against the wall so the actual leaves are facing us and yeah I, I can tell this one must be an older photo uh, because your plants are much larger now. Good on you. Yeah so you're using grow lights you know to create a nice presentation site. That's nice. Plants are so much more than just the surface level right? I mean for you guys the plants really made an impact on um, on you and your son through these really tricky times. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, you know, I don't take it for granted that people are happy to share um, such a personal story. So really appreciate you sharing. Um, and thanks for showing us how, how impactful plants can really be. So thank you, Tom and Otto and the rest of your family. That was an intense start to the video. Let's have a look at the next person. Hi there, my name is Juniper. I'm from the US and I have a YouTube channel called Juniper Grows Stuff. And I'll have it linked as well. It's called Juniper Grows Stuff, but the handle is My Room is a Garden. I've been keeping plants for about a year now and your channel was one of the first I followed for plant inspo. As soon as I saw how huge your plants on moss poles were, I knew I had to try it. I'm so glad I did. My plants are so happy, especially my philodendron paraiso verde. Thank you for the opportunity to share my moss pole plants and for the plant wisdom and inspiration you've shared. And yeah, you're from, you said you're from the US, so let's have a look. Hello, my name is Juniper from the YouTube channel Juniper Grows Stuff, and these are my moss poles. Sydney Plant Guy is the reason why I even started using moss poles. So far, my plants have been loving it. My Paraiso Verde is well into pole number two, and my Silver Sword Philodendron is not far behind at all. Also on moss poles, I have Philodendron Pink Princess, Pothos Enjoy, Unnamed Monstera. This is Pothos Penatum and Pothos Golden, which is getting so big it is almost ready for pole number two, and watering them is so easy. I learned this from Sydney Plant Guy. You just poke a couple holes in the top of a bottle and easy watering. And I learned that from past plant life. So let's keep sharing the, the good tips and tricks because sometimes just the little things uh, make all the difference in the world. I reckon there's so many people hesitant to trying moss poles because they're too worried about the watering experience when the watering experience is the least issue out of all of them. Thank you Juniper for sharing your plants and thank you for, you know, thank you for using me as your inspiration. I really, really enjoy that. Thank you. All right, next one. We've got Marla Carlson from Idaho in the US. I've got this 
Snow. Good office setup. Okay, guys, majority of the submissions in today's video are from like last week, but I think in my last video, I by accident switched two people around, like I associated the wrong photos with the wrong message. So I think this is my attempt at correcting it. So I hope I got it right this time, but that's why it's snowing out there because that was actually submitted quite a while ago and I messed it up in the, in, in the first part of my video that I did uh, earlier this year. I hope I got that right. Is there snow in Idaho? Or maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe I messed it up again. I hope this is yours, Marla. Uh, but yeah, just trying to explain the snow because obviously right now in the US it would still be end of summer, right? But it's a great example that shows, it's like, look, yeah, there's snow out there and obviously normally these plants would not appreciate snowy conditions. But when we're talking about growing indoors, our conditions are more similar than different, irrespective of what's happening outside. If it's snowing, you're gonna heat your place. If it's a heat wave out there, you're probably gonna cool your place. So we're all kind of facing the same issues inside or similar issues inside, no matter whereabouts in the world we are. Nice Nikons. I do like your aesthetic. I really like that black wall. It makes the green pop so well. Yeah, that's cool. Very nice. I really like these green leaves in front of that black wall. I think that looks really cool. And I really like these pots that you are using. I very frequently get asked from people in the US where they can buy these uh, see-through pots and yours even have extra aeration. So I hope this is you, Marla, and I hope this is from Idaho in the US. And maybe you can leave a comment down below letting us know where you've got these pots from. Thank you for submitting and thank you for putting on the beautiful calm music. I hope I'm not gonna get a copyright issue with your music, but uh, I suppose we will find out, right? Next one, we've got Josh from Newcastle in Australia and his Instagram is botanical underscore wonders underscore. I have fell in love with your content for a few months now and you have inspired me to make my own moss. So you made 10 poles already, you've got two more planned and you said that these plants have only been on the pole for about a month, but they're already finding their way into the pole. And then you gave me all of the IDs. So let's have a look. We've got a Mangela, a Glorious, a Sapastatum, Apropemnum panadum variegata, Snow Queen, Sodiroi, Milano, Dragon Tail, Marble Queen, Pothos, and Monstera adansonii. Great tasted plants, and you also sent me a video. Let's have a look at that. I do love a good red back on any plant as well. Aww. Oh, it, it. where's mine? Where's my baby? Another one! Oh, thanks for including the cats. Good on you. Looks really good. Humble beginnings. I also started all of my poles with really small plants so they can take full advantage of it. So I would love to know how your journey is going because I also think that you were somebody who submitted a while ago. So it would be nice to know how they did over winter. Let me know in the comments, please. Alrighty, next one. My name is Cambrai Kleinhans um, and as you guessed, my family is from Germany. Yes, <laughs> I live in Chilton, Wisconsin, more specific right next to Lake Winnebago. Winnebago? I hope I pronounce everything. By the way, I'm probably going to pronounce so many names super incorrectly, so apologies for that. But my name is always being mispronounced by everybody as well. So I think 
I'm allowed to. <laughs> Our weather is very similar to Germany from what I understand. I discovered your videos about two years ago and I have been hooked ever since. I've had plants since I've had an aquarium but it was always the same old grab a chunk of cool looking pothos and jam it in the aquarium filter or in the back and let the roots filter the water. I never really thought about putting grow lights above my tanks to grow the plants like they would in nature. That is until I scrolled across plants on moss poles. I was wondering if you ever had a sprout pop out of the bottom of a moss pole, like on my golden pothos. I'll have a look in a sec. Um, I don't use any specific fertilizer. Instead, I prefer to use the water and the fish poop <laughs> from when I clean my aquariums. I've heard really good things about that. A lot of people said they used their aquarium water. I suppose, you know, in nature, nobody goes around and fertilizes uh, plants either. It's all taken care of naturally, right? You also have a YouTube channel, which I will link down here. And let's have a look at your video. And we are going to start with Global Green Pothos. Pretty good. I like the green on green variegation. Got some early roots up in there. One thing up there. But. I have to say, I have that as well, and mine also just doesn't really increase in leaf size. So it's good to see that's not just me. In the back. Yeah, they got roots in the fall. In general, I feel like a lot of people prefer the plastic back. I see a lot more people with plastic back moss poles uh, these days. Makes sense, right? They're super functional. Up next. I actually really like this, how you grew it on the moss pole pole. As you can see, I spray it every day with the spray bottle. Lost a few leaves in the way, but it's been in there for about a year, almost two years now. Some nice roots. Yeah, look, I really enjoy growing on iron bark as well and yes the plants can root into it I mean you saw that there like you you do have roots going into the wood and kind of attaching itself onto the wood and that's exactly what they would do in nature I am just a bit worried what you're gonna do when when it reaches the top huh? mm -hmm. I think it's on there definitely on there which is almost like not super desirable in that moment because well it is reaching the top and then well, you can always just clip it and let it reshoot, I suppose. Um, but you don't have the proper chop and extent. But maybe you don't want to. But it does look cool. It gives like a nice natural vibe to it, right? And a little, little guy spring out of there after yeah. the cat. Got it after one of the leaves. Actually, we should just do this video just with cats, huh? I don't want to see plants, I want to see cats. <laughs> um, yes, I've had this happen as well to me, the, the thing you did before, where sometimes it just randomly starts another shoot somewhere. Actually, I've got one right here. Like, I mean, the plant is growing up here, finally giving me a new leaf, first one in six months, I think, but it also just randomly started activating this node down here. I'm not complaining, but it happens. Must be happy. <laughs> Nice. I really like how consistent the plant has shingled or like has grown, right? And everything is pointing in the right direction. Oh, makes me so happy. I, lo I love plants and I like them to grow like somewhat wild, but also love structure. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, decent size. Keep going. Oh, look at this. This is the cutest little moss pole I've ever seen. Oh, that's adorable. Actually, oh, I want to make mini moss poles now for baby plants. I need to find some plants that stay super, super tiny, actually. That's my, that's my goal, I think. Thank you, Cambrai. Cam Cambrai? Oh, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. We've got Sharon. Hi, Jan and Bradley. My plants are kept outside on my 
back decking slash porch and the majority are over 12 months old to two years. Although I have an outdoor garden, I never thought about growing indoor plants until I saw your video. So thank you for inspiring me to have a go at moss poles and aeroids. I've also signed up to Victorian Aeroids of Australia Society and everyone is so friendly and willing to help me with my never ending questions. I've killed far too many plants but I'm getting the hang of it now. I'm loving your posts, they are both inspiring and make me laugh. Thank you so much and I really really love making people laugh as well. Of course I want to inspire with my videos and hopefully I get some people to join this hobby or take this hobby to the next level or enjoy the hobby more as a result of it but I also like to let's say just entertain like you know if you watch my video and you feel a bit happier after you watch the video than you did before then I think that's hard to beat, right? Like that's amazing. So thank you so much. And let's have a look at your photos. And you, you said you're from, well, Victoria in Australia then. Perfect. Looking good, very lush, very green, beautiful. And there was, was also an older submission. So this was before winter hit us. Let me know, please let me know in the comments if your collection has survived all of winter um, or how. Oh, and if you kept them outside all of winter, because my Mykons outside did not survive. Good. The Brazil, I think the Brazil uh, over there in the background is such an under, underrated plant. Nice. I do love these uh, Skindapsis actually shingling as well. Maybe I should put my, I have mine trailing. Maybe I should put mine on a moss pole. Perfect. Looks like you're using some grow vertical poles as well. And... You clearly go to Bunnings and get the Bunnings pots. And yeah, looking really good. Thank you so much for sharing. And thank you so much for submitting. And thank you for watching my content as well. Next up, I love your videos and I'm so excited to meet you in Miami. Okay, now we're going on to new submissions. Perfect. I'm excited to meet you too. Um, my Instagram is plants by Barrett and I turned 13 in September and I have a little present for you at the show. Have a nice day, Barrett. We know Barrett, you already submitted something last time. I'm excited to see your glow up and I'm also looking forward to meeting you at the fair. But if you have a present for me, it can't be a plant. Um, I can't bring any plants back to Australia with me. And also, you absolutely don't have to give me a present. Uh, just rocking up and saying hello, take a photo of me, that's already present enough. Uh, so, but thank you, Barrett. Let's have a look at your collection. I know you submitted a little video um, when I did the Dr. SPG video as well, and I noticed a massive glow up in your collection. So let's have a look. Hello, Jan. Here are some of my plants that I would like to share. Here's a variegated philodendron squamiferum right here. Nice. I actually found this one at a grocery store for $9, which is a really good find. Very good find. Here's a Pearl Marks Flame right here. Nice. Amazon Sunset. That's like the one thing I actually have on my uh, wish list, the Verkhoisen Amazon Sunset, but it doesn't, doesn't exist in Australia. About to push out a new leaf. Nice. Love this one. <laughs> I also have a little luxuriance right here. That's also on my wish list, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and here's my giant Milano. And this beautiful varicosum right here. Very nice. The leaf isn't as velvety because it has water on the leaf beautiful back sides. It's growing, it's starting to push out a new leaf right here. I got this one when it was only this big. It's grown all that in just like three, four months. Nice! And here's an Anthurium Wendelingeri. I love this one. It's one with the spiral inflow, here's isn't it? Anthurium Oraquianum. One of my favorites. This one I love your Viterifolium. Yours is amazing. It's like super bushy. This one's mine. Love this new leaf. It's actually really it's nice sheen to it. Patriciae. Such a good plant. I love the ripples in this leaf. It's starting to grow a new leaf right there. Here's like a little 
melanocrysum propagation right here. And here's Anthurium king of spades. I love this one. It just it has yellow on the leaves right here because it was in higher light, I think. Here's some rare baby Anthurium that are in here. This is called Anthurium cuticuens. It's a really cool plant. I like this one. It looks Here's cool. My luxuriance of growing a new leaf. Nice. And this is an Anthurium Ace of Spades by Anthurium Dresslerii F2. Here's a Varicosum Titanium. I have one of those. And remember in the first, the first show, the plants video, my glorious, it only had those tiny leaves down there. And now it's growing really big. I love this one so much. It's growing a new leaf right there. I do think you are potentially giving your glorious a little too much light. It looks a little bleached out, but as long as it's growing, Beautiful Tycon. I also am growing an avocado tree. That looks so different to... Do you have any like tips and tricks for a fill? I suppose there are different types of avocado trees, right? But it looks very different to the ones that I... have had a big one in my garden uh, three houses ago. Dendron gigas or gigas or love to hear that. Mine is over there and it's actually just done so little like it's growing but it's just not sizing up um, meanwhile my Milano right next to it is shooting the light side finally and the Milano historically I've had a much harder time with so I haven't really mastered the gigas either I think this season is I'm gonna try some something different and I know you don't really like Hoya no but this one I love the waxy leaves and the undersides feel super soft and in the humidity in my grow tent the roots go crazy here's an epipermanum gigantium variegated hmm. interesting is also will be very interesting to see what that looks like when you, when it matures that's nice ignore the cricket and this is my monster album yeah that's pretty much it. Besides, I have a little jungle growing down in the pot of this massive monstera. And here's the patriciae, the other one. I cut off that leaf and it's growing a new one. So, can't wait to see this video. Thank you, Barrett. I cannot believe that you are turning 13 uh, next month or this month. By the time you see this, this month. Um, that's crazy. You have, first of all, you have very good taste in plants. <laughs> um, and even, even if we include that one Hoya there, actually I'm warming up to the idea of maybe growing a Hoya or two in my greenhouse and letting it grow wild. I'll just never going to be the person with a shelf full of Hoyas. And you got that tent new as well, right? Like you didn't used to have a tent. I think they used to all be in your bedroom. And I think since you've had them in that tent, um, they would be exploding in there, right? Because you get to control all of the conditions, conditions set the potential and so on. But it's also interesting to see for everybody else that yeah, you, you get a tent, you create the perfect conditions, but not all plants like it equally, right? So some actually it was too much light for them, whereas others are thriving in that highlight and so on. So it's interesting to see, but you do like, you're doing amazing. Really nice. And also the, the way that you did the video and everything, you're coming for my geek, I can tell. Uh, but yeah, I'm very much looking forward to seeing you in Miami and thank you so much for submitting. Next one. Hey, how are you? Um, Azan from Pakistan. Here are a few of my plants which I love the most. I am truly inspired by you as every of your videos is somewhere informative. My Instagram is the rare stem. Alrighty, let's have a look. Beautiful Billy. See, it's really nice if you have the space for it, but I just can't get over how much this plant spreads. Like, it's a lot of space commitment. But if you have the space for it, I really like the orange petioles. Well done. That's beautiful. Great variegation, great shape on that one. Hmm. 
It's a Florida, right? And this one looks a bit manky. I kind of like it. I kind of like that it's like somewhat deformed. Or maybe it's not a... No, it's a Florida beauty, right? I think it's a Florida beauty. Beautiful. That looks awesome. I always wanted a Monstera with nice sectoral variegation, but the sectoral variegation also browns really easily. I wish I had both, a sectoral one and a more splotchy one. Oh, well, can't have it all, can we? Yes, it was a Florida beauty, right? Looks a bit different. Maybe there's something mixed in with it or I don't know. Well, thank you so much for sharing. I really enjoy your Florida beauty. Your soil mix looks really nice as well. And you're filling your pulse with cocoa chips. So everything is possible. Thanks for submitting. Next one. My name is Michael. I'm from Miami, Florida. My Miami people are coming through. Uh, okay, you live in Beijing, China, and I've been following uh, my Instagram Sydney Plant Guy for several months. You have inspired me to begin using Moss Pulse and it has been a game changer. I'm still trying to fine tune the technique to help the plants root into the pole. As of now, the plants use them for support to climb. They can clearly sense the pole, but for some reason, either the aerial roots are too thick to get into the pole plastic, mesh or something wrong with the way I'm watering, but the roots haven't grown into the pole. They just touch the side. Anyway, I've got four varieties to share with you. My Monstera Albo, Monstera Standaliana, Philodendron Black Gold, never heard of that, and Monstera Adansonia. One question is relating to my Monstera Tycon. She's one of my favorite plants and she's growing in a weird way. I sent two pics, one of the full plant where you can sort of see the plant has two growth areas at once. I just don't know how to help it when it grows further. Do you think I should cut the plant in half or use two moss poles in one pot or one big pole and somehow try the two growth points to find the pole? Thanks for everything you do. You're amazing. Your house is lovely. Your plants and garden are stunning. Thank you. Let's have a look. Okay, so this is your Tycon. So you've got one offshoot here and one offshoot there. And then you've wrapped some moss around here. Oh, I love the little Lego Corgi over here. That's cute. Yeah. Okay, so in relation to the Tycon and then we look at everything else. I know what you mean, they're kind of going away from each other. Um, I personally don't think you need to double plant a Tycon to create a really nice display. They grow with very short internodal spacing. So I don't think you necessarily need two on one pole. I think it would make sense to split them uh, because I think one in itself um, is more than enough uh, to create a nice display. I personally have mine crawling. I don't even have mine on a moss pole. So what you could do is you could just give it a bigger pot and let it kind of crawl along the surface of the pot and then the one could grow this way and one could grow this way so you actually create a really nice large display if you don't want to cut it but if you do want to cut it and you want to put it on a moss pole then i would go with what you suggested actually cut it there after you've air layered that top cutting uh, that top cutting uh, you know might revert a little bit because you're chopping off majority of the root system so yeah i think that that looks good where you suggested to cut it i'll do that so up to you i personally don't think you need a moss pole for a tycon but if you want to give it a moss pole and grow it climbing rather than crawling uh, then I think it makes sense to cut it. If you want to keep it without a moss pole, kind of have it just crawl uh, along the surface of the pot, then I don't think you need to cut it. Alrighty, and then you've got uh, Adansonia looking nice. Loving the airflow next to it as well. Uh, okay, so Philodendron, you called it Philodendron Black Golden, I think that's what you called it. So um, Milano, yeah, makes sense. They're kind of a little bit goldish when they first come out, right? And then black later. Um, and Standaliana. I've never seen a Standaliana actually size up. I don't know if they can. I don't think they can, but this looks nice. At least you've got really nice variegation on yours. And an Albo, a beautiful Albo as well. See, you've got some mottled variegation and then some sectoral, some more half-half. Like, you have everything in one plant. I'm jealous. <laughs> Good on you. Thank you for submitting and thanks for watching. Next one. I'm Sean all the way from India. 
First off, I would like to say how grateful I am to you for really making me fall in love with large leaf plants. Seeing them grow uh, in their size, especially my Monstera Deliciosa, is absolutely incredible. Your videos help me know what to buy in order to make the moss pearls and how to go about them and what plants to go for. Across all socials, you are le underscore freelon underscore sean i'll put it on screen uh, so let's have a look at your plants that's why monstera deliciosa two years since you got it it's looking good look at that continuous increase in leaf size nice fenestration looking really this normal green monstera is actually just so pretty i should get one i don't have one um actually i have one formerly variegated one that's reverted it's pretty much green now so i do have one actually yes what's in that pole i wonder what you filled that pole with it looks almost like stones or shells oh two years ago it was tiny from this to this well done yeah and yeah you can see over here you didn't even use a moss pore for this one monstera deliciosa and then thai thai constellation is really just a deliciosa as well they don't need a moss pole they grow with very short internodal spacing and they grow pretty wild. If you have good conditions, you won't need a moss pole and uh, because it grows so slowly, you also don't really need the propagation benefits that the moss pole um, has. Yeah. Mm. Oh, you're welcome. I love Monstera Densonia. It's one of my all time favorites. Oh, your cat is so cute and a nice plant as well, but I'm just here for the cat. <sighs> Such a cutie. Nice. <laughs> I love that. Wow, you must have really good humidity where you live. And then when Gloriosum, even looks like the white vein Gloriosum as well. Very nice. Species Columbian, growing up a mulberry tree. Nice. Thai beauty. That one is sick. I've Actually, this year, I should get some caladiums. Yeah, let's do it. Nice, okay, so they're all not necessarily in order. So this was the vanilla 2019, and now, it's looking like this. I'm gonna have a quick coffee break. I'll be right back. I'm plantito bong. I thought plantito is like, uh, is that not Spanish for like, plant uncle or stuff like that? Or is it is it your name? I don't know. We, I'll keep calling you Plantito Bong. I really don't know how to start. I'm really a big fan of your huge plants. Thank you. Not gonna lie, after seeing your collection and your easily described care routine, I started my journey with houseplants. Love your moss poles, but here those are a bit costly, but I somehow managed some DIY moss poles. Those are working somehow well, I guess. I tried to experiment with those branches too, but that's not enough for them maybe. Soon they started to climb on the wall. Your Instagram and YouTube channel are plantito underscore bong. And let's have a look at your plants. Oh yeah, you've got some DIY moss poles over here. They look fine. Oh, look at you go. Looks very nice and lush. I really like this one. I wonder what... Oh, no, 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 no. Go back. Go back. Go back here. I really like this one over here. Is it a para... Is it a, a Jose Bueno? I think it's a Jose... Jose Bueno. Nice. Already has some fenestrations. What is this one? Is it like some... I don't know what it is, but it looks really nice. I like it. Very nice. Another one with really nice mottled variegation and then suddenly this really nice sectoral leaf. Good on you. Nice. Nice. Oh, what is this one? There's a bit of red in it. Oh, that's it. Yeah, and here you can see the moss pole a little bit closer. Yeah, it looks a little bit different to the sphagnum moss pole that I've got. But at the end of the day, like if you keep the principles in mind, there's no right or wrong here, right? We want a vertical support and ideally we fill it with a growing medium. So as long as it can keep moisture, um, it will do it a trick. Thank you for sending that through and let's move on to the next one. My name is Alex and I'm from Charlotte in North Carolina. 
In this video, I have a Caladium and Alocasia Cuprea Florida Ghost, Philodendron Gigantium Blizzard, Philodendron Pink Princess Monstera Thai Constellation. Sweet. Wow, your Florida Ghost is super white. I love that. First of all, tennis player. Second of all, that has got to be one of the nicest pink princesses I've ever seen. To be honest, I've never really seen really nice ones. They usually look really meh. But yours has really dark foliage and really nice pink variegation. If all pink princesses looked like that, I would have gotten one for sure. Over here they all like uh, have the nice nickname Pooh Princess because they look like poo. Nice work. I am now actually contemplating getting a pink princess. So thanks for the inspiration. <laughs> Next up. Hey Jan, my name is Emil. Emil? Emil? I don't know. Sorry. There's around 100 plants here. Wow, okay, we're in for a treat. Uh, you've been a big inspiration and source of information since I started caring for plants about a year ago. Here are some of my collection. And then you went on to naming almost all 100. I'm sorry I wasn't able to name include every plant. There's just so many. I hope you like my small piece of indoor jungle. Fair enough. Let's look at it as a collective. We don't need to look at each individual plant. Let's have a look at all of them together. Over here, love the sheen of the varicoysum over there. That's very cool. Really beautiful anthuriums as well. I reckon you're in Germany and your name is Emil. I reckon. I can tell by the window <laughs> and the radiator. I could be wrong. Uh, yeah, that looks very German. Oh, what is this structure that you've got there? That's pretty cool. Okay. Must be an El Choco over here, I like that. Very nice. Yeah, here's this structure again. Did you build this yourself or is it, did you have that idea? I like that. It's like a little step ladder with little pots on them. Super cute. Would be great for a greenhouse actually. Yeah. Or like the garden. It is a jungle in there. Nice. Look at you taking full advantage of that light that you've got, supplementing with four lights a little bit. <gasps> oh, scissors, this color. I really want one of those again. I used to have one and it died. I really want that one again. The scissors, this color on the left over there. I'll see enough. I think this time of the year might be hard to find one over here, but maybe in summer they'll become available again. Gegen Kino. Yeah, I think you're German. Emil. I'm going with German and Emil. Thank you so much for sharing. Alrighty, next up we have Garrett from Denver, Colorado in the US. He is only 14 years old and he's sharing his Blamanii, Gloriosum, Glorious Vercoisum and Monstera Adansonia with me. This is you. Yes, this is you. I like this stand as well, the little metal one. Verrocosms are just so sexy. Oh, and I love this banana that you've got down here as well. I think it's a banana with a little bit of red in them. Very nice. Moss poles look great. They look really good. And you're only 14. Wow, there's so many youngsters that are getting into the hobby. I like that. Thanks for sharing. Garrett. The other one was Barrett. Garrett, you have to become friends with Barrett. Like, you just have to. How cute would that be? Garrett and Barrett, make a podcast, please, when you're, when you're 18. For now, just finish school. Alrighty, next up, we've got Renee from, oh no, I'm definitely gonna mispronounce this one. Is it Saskatoon in Canada? I'll pop it in on screen. <laughs> I've been watching you for half a year now, love the moss pals, have incorporated them into my collection. I decided my Monstera Albo, Thai Constellation and Epi Pregnancy Blue Blue need a moss pal. I have roughly 75 different plants, 25 to 30 outside right now, loving it. The pictures are of my moss pals and the majority of the collection. It is a mishmash of Monstera Philodendron, Pothos, Calithius, Marantus, Sansevierius, Alocasius and a couple of ferns. 
I'm waiting for my first Anthurium. I'm getting a Vitara Folium variegated. Nice. There's one. I have a spare. I have a bare spot on the wall. <laughs> All right, let's have a look. Um, this one. All right, Renee. This one is you. Another really nice elbow. I feel like everybody has better luck with their variegation than me, but that's okay. Nice. I do actually much prefer the elbow over the tie. It keeps changing for me. Sometimes I'm like, sometimes I'm definitely team tie, sometimes I'm team elbow, but I think at the end of the day we just need both, right? Um, nice. The most parts are slowly taken over. You give one here, one there, oh, suddenly you've got 75. <laughs> oh, here we go. I love that you're using a little mirror to double the impact, right? Another one here. Also, it doubles the impact of the light, but also makes your plant look twice as lush. I love that. Nice. Your Maranta looks amazing. This one. Thanks so much for sharing, Renee, and thanks for watching my channel. Next one. Good afternoon. Here's a pic of my philodendron, Jose Bono. I hope you consider buying one. I have one, actually. Right here. I have one. I haven't shown it much on my channel, to be fair. Hasn't been doing that well, that's why. Um, it's been the fastest grower for me here in central dry ass Texas. <laughs> also, a few pics of my tropical collections here as well. Love from my garden to yours, Andrea from Texas. Alrighty, let's have a look. Wow, nice. <laughs> it first looked like a nursery, you're that well stocked. <laughs> and then a dark, no, hang on. Yeah, and at night, I like that. Yes, that is a nice plant. They are such nice plants. AJ had a really nice one as well, but I don't know why. For me, it's just not growing that fast. I think this this season, I'm gonna put a little bit more effort into it and let's see if that makes a difference. But yeah, actually, that photo motivated me to try a little bit harder with my, uh, with my Jose Bueno. Next one. Hey, my name is Emma, I'm 22 and I'm from Germany. I'm sending you a short video of some of my plants. I hope you like it. I love your content and you are really inspiring me in my plant care and to make content myself. You can find me on Instagram and YouTube as internodal underscore space. That's actually a good one. I like it. And liebe Grüße aus Deutschland. Liebe Grüße zurück. Let's have a look at your video. Hi, my name is Emma and I'm from Germany and I want to show you my plant collection. This is my room full of plants. And I want to show you especially this corner. There are some of my favorites, mm. especially the ones on... Mm, Your Florida ghost looks so bushy, I love it. Moss poles. And I built all these moss poles by myself, inspired from the ones from Grow Vertical. Mm -hmm. I love the Philodendron Florida Ghost, my Philodendron Tartum, mm. um, the Milano Chrysum, and my absolutely favorite is the Philodendron Joepi. This is the newest leaf, I really, really love it. And my Anthurium Quirimalens is also on a moss pole and it works really, really well for Nice, yes, a lot of people don't consider putting their anthuriums on moss poles, but it works really well for them. Her, I was inspired by your Anthurium Urquanum and there we have another Melanochrysum and Anthurium Pallidiflorum. She is absolutely thriving, I love her and there we have Hang on, hang on, hang on. Was she just hanging on that piece of wood with a little bit of moss maybe? I love that. Yeah. I love her and there's- She's sexy, she's really nice. I have my big Ansurium crystalline hybrid yeah. and I was really inspired by your chunky aerid mix. So I mixed up one by myself and I use it for all of my plants in different varieties and it works really, really well for me. Yay. <laughs> and a huge bird of paradise. I love hearing that you guys have success using my recipes or my tutorials and so on, that it really made a difference. Like, 
I'm sometimes so worried that like, oh, maybe maybe somebody's using my Aeroid mix and it doesn't work for them and then, you know, it's my fault and so on. So it's really nice to hear that you guys are using it and it's working well for you because it is working well for me. But look, guys, everybody always keeps telling me, it's like, of course your plants are thriving. You live in Australia. Even in Germany, you can have your plants thriving, right? Like... They look fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing. I actually really love, uh, I love it when you guys send me videos and when you talk a little bit as well. Then I don't have to do all the talking. It's cool. So thank you, Emma. All right, next one. My name is Ryan. I'm a public securities research consultant in a suburb outside of Washington, DC. My girlfriend and I love your shows. We have learned so much from you and decided to rescue plants recently. From one specialist to another, Thank you for the advice. It was well worth the listening. Most recently rescued a pothos that was sitting in tap water for 15 years. No fertilizer and the water never gets changed. What a legend. <laughs> Any suggestions on plant arrangements or how to care for the pothos? Have you seen Monstera climbing in a tomato cage like this rescue? If I ever get to rescue a variegated, I will certainly transplant to a moss pile. I'd love to be able to multiply and extend easier. Thanks again for all you do. All right, very intrigued. I have got to see this. Also, first of all, I love that you are just rescuing all of your plants and that's also perfectly fine. Like, you know, you don't need the fanciest plants in the world and so on. I think growing a normal, basic plant really nicely is always gonna look much better than having the rarest, most amazing plant in the world, but it's suffering, right? So absolutely nothing wrong with a good rescue plant. They're the most rewarding to grow. Huge alocasia growing indoors. That's crazy. Huge. I love that palm. I love that you have chosen a few really large plants rather than heaps and heaps of uh, small plants. Is that the pothos that was in water for 15 years? Oh my god. Holy moly, there's a lot of roots. What? There's a lot of roots, but not many leaves. Definitely this one would like some nutrients. Now, actually, because you asked me what my suggestion would be over here, the problem is these roots are so well and truly used to water. If you don't put them in soil, they're most likely actually going to rot. Um, they're not gonna have a good time. So to be honest, there's nothing wrong with growing in water. I would just provide a little bit of nutrients. And I think if you provide nutrients, if you put some nutrients in that water, then the plant will grow heaps of leaves. I would leave it. I mean, even just knowing the backstory, knowing that this plant has been in this vase for 15 years, I think that's a cool backstory that you shouldn't you shouldn't change that, you know? Like, I mean, you can take a propagation and plant that in soil and on a moss pole or something like that, but I would keep the majority in there. I think it's a cool one. And uh, yeah, it's something that you can't buy at a nursery. This is the sort of stuff you only get if you rescue a plant. And then over here, you said it's in a tomato cage. Yeah, it's on like a tomato trellis. Yeah, perfectly fine. I keep saying it with Monstera Deliciosa. I don't think you really need a moss pile, right? You need a vertical support, but they grow so slowly and they're so robust. They don't really need the additional uh, propagation benefits of a moss pile or the additional water and fertilizer from the moss pile and so on. So it looks good, really nice and lush. I love that you have chosen just a few plants, but they're big in their statement pieces rather than hundreds of smaller plants. Thanks for submitting, Ryan. Next one. My name is Eve and I'm from Quebec, Canada. I discovered your channel recently and immediately loved your videos. I have been starting to put my plants on moss poles a couple of days ago. Here attached is a picture of my Monstera Thai constellation. I've had her for seven months and only got one new leaf since uh, I got her. She's already showing hope for a new leaf. Also, I have a question. I was wondering if you still have some crawling plants like your Philodendron Gloriosum. I saw a video you uploaded two years ago and if you still do, could you do an update on those crawling plants and maybe a care tips video. Thank you for your content. It's very wholesome and helpful. Thank you, Eve. Before I look at the plants, let me answer your question, otherwise I'll forget. Um, I still, still have some crawlers, but I actually only have one potted up, um, which is my Plumaniae. 
all the other crawlers I just put in my garden bed and they're having a field day. So to be honest, I don't do much from a care perspective for my crawlers um, because I just let mother nature take care of them and this year they actually even survived winter out there, very surprisingly. Last year my Gloriosum died in the garden. Um, but yeah, I've never really been the biggest fan of crawlers because of their growth pattern and also I've always had really bad spider mite infestations with them. But since, I growing them, since growing them in the garden, I haven't had any pests, so don't really have much more to say, unfortunately. Alrighty. Tycon, mine is also growing really slowly, by the way. I don't know if that's uh, if that helps or if that makes it better. Um, but yeah, it will be nice. Stay patient. This leaf over here definitely looks a little bit pregnant. So, yes. Nice work. By the way, technically, I do think this moss pole might be a little bit too tall for the Tycon. The Tycon is going to grow really, really slowly. It's probably, it would probably take three years to get to the top of that moss pole. So I think maybe, 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 while well, the plant hasn't fully rooted into the moss pole yet, it might be something to consider. Maybe put a shorter but much thicker moss pole. So you can still provide volume for the roots um, and you can still provide that vertical support, but because the tycon is gonna grow so slowly, you don't have all of this tall, more empty moss pole for so many years. Um, but I have also done something similar to that before. I've had a Sodiroy, for example, and that Sodiroy took a decent three years to grow up that moss pole and it was fine. I'm not saying it's not possible. The Tycon's gonna have really thick roots, so I reckon eventually the bottom part of the pole is just gonna be completely filled with roots. There's not gonna be any moss left and the top you still have, uh, have and then you still have that empty top bit. Um, Okay, anyway, just a consideration, but it's still perfectly fine. So thank you so much for submitting. And last one for today's video, let's have a look. I'm a crazy plant lady who started really getting into philodendron in a big way four years ago. I have a gorgeous jungle in my greenhouse located in southwest Sydney. Yeah, Sydney ciders, let's go which I'm very proud of and I have a particular interest in hybridizing philodendron. I have created quite a few, about seven different hybrids in different stages of growth. Oh, I'll come and visit. <laughs> I'm active on Instagram. It's at Grown by Michelle. I'm a big fan and it was your early content that got me on the path of growing mature philodendron, which I love. I'm a big fan of yours, having also attended your talk at the Aeroid Society. Wow, the, the Aeroid Society talk is actually what made me start a YouTube channel in the first place. I would love to show you my collection. Alrighty, so this one is the this one is a philodendron Betty Waterberry X Florida Green hybrid that you made. Looks nice, interesting shape. It's in shape that I think AJ would really appreciate as well. Then you've got a philodendron Gigas and Euphos. Jesus, that is huge. Okay. You need to spill the beans. Like what's the what's the what's the guy here? Because mine is not working. And Barrett also wants to know, what are you doing with your gigas that we're not doing? I suppose you grow yours in the greenhouse. Hey, maybe I should pop mine in the greenhouse this season. It's looking good. Wow, I'm impressed. Anthurium crystallinum grande, I grew from seed. Oh my god, that is sexy. And it's so lush and compact. That's nice. Oh, and the little red sinus. I love this one. This looks very nice. And dark anthurium crystallinum hybrid that you also grew from seed. Also very nice. You've got some very nice plants, Michelle. I think that's a good way to wrap up this video. This was the first 20 submissions. There's uh, a little more than 20 waiting for the next part. But for me to have an open mind and be patient and happy and relaxed and react to these properly, it's probably best for me to not sit here and do this for four hours straight. Otherwise, towards the end, I'll just get a little bit demotivated, irrespective of how beautiful your plants are. So I think we'll wrap it up over here today. Thank you so much for everybody 
everybody who has submitted. I really, really enjoy seeing all of your plans and I really love all of your beautiful, encouraging words. So thank you so much. If you enjoyed this video, please like, please hit subscribe if you haven't already. Please leave a nice comment down below as well. Engaging with my content is by far the best way for you guys to support me. I'll say goodbye now and I'll see you in the next part really shortly. Bye.